Hi there, welcome to Nippy Invest. We are now heading into one of my favourite times of the year, and that is quarterly reporting season on the ASX. If I did have to choose which of the quarterly reporting months is my favourite, October would probably be third or fourth behind January and July. And the only reason I, I do prefer January and July is because the next month, February and August, are half year and yearly reporting months. So I do prefer those quarters because we transition from quarterly reports to annual or half year reports. But I still like October because we get a good sense of how companies are performing for the first quarter of the financial year for most of the companies. And the first September quarterly reports have been released to the market on the 6th of October. And in this video, I'll be focusing on one of those companies, XREF. I'm a little bit biased about this company because I am a shareholder and I became a shareholder uh, because of the, of the June quarter results. Uh, a very favorable, uh, good quarter in my opinion. They were operational cash flow positive in that quarter. And we had seen a share price rising in the lead up to them releasing that uh, quarterly report. And they have maintained being operational cash flow positive for the September quarter. And we have seen a positive reaction from the market with the share price up 18% on this day. Now, XRF was not the first company to release their Appendix 4C for the September quarter. Uh, that uh, belongs to Self Wealth. They released their Appendix 4C at 8.27 a.m. And then XREF released their Appendix 4C at 9.16 a.m. So XREF was beaten by one hour. Maybe uh, Self Wealth wanted to beat XREF because uh, traditionally XREF uh, tends to release their Appendix 4C on the 6th day of the quarter, so uh, April 6th, July 6th, and now September 6th, and they've beaten Self Wealth over the past few quarters. Now, it's not a race, but I do prefer companies release their quarterly report as soon as possible. You notice here also, this is from ComSec, that Self Wealth combined their activities report and their appendix 4C into the one announcement, while XREF separated their Appendix 4C and their Activities Report in separate announcements. I actually do prefer what XREF does because you can click on Appendix 4C and it takes you straight to the financial statements. And then what I usually do is read the financial statement first, then I read the Activities Report. If uh, you do see what uh, or get what Self Wealth does, you have to go through the report uh, and towards the end of the report to look at the financial statement. So I do prefer what XREF does, uh, separate both the reports, um, that's a little nitpicky thing, but that's just what I prefer. Everyone's different. Now, a few facts in regards to XREF. This is a human resources uh, slash recruitment technology company. Some of their platforms include reference checking, background and ID checks, uh, reference templates, analytics and insights, i.e. identifying the best candidates for a role, talent sourcing and security and compliance. Seems like they're really focused on reference tracking if you go to their website or just look at some of their announcements. Uh, some of their customers include Zero, Airbus, Krispy Kreme, KPMG, McDonald's, Qantas, and Westpac. They have way more customers than those, but those are the first few customers that I did see in a link I did um, find somewhere. Anyway, uh, XREF was founded in 2011. Now I've seen this company being founded anywhere from 2009 to 2011, but I went to LinkedIn and uh, on the CEO's uh, page in LinkedIn, Lee Martin Seymour, he put the company, well, or he founded the company in 2011, so I believe him over other sources. If you go to the ASX, they will say XREF listed in 2007, if I remember correctly. Well, maybe it was 1987. Uh, that seemed wrong, and I think possibly XREF did backdoor list on the ASX, and the company that backdoored into um, listed on the ASX uh, in 1987 or wherever that was. But XREF listed on the ASX uh, themselves as XREF in February 2016. So they've been around for just over five years. One good thing I like about this company and other investors do like skin in the game. And they also like co-founder led companies. And XREF is definitely that. Their CEO and co-founder is Lee Martin Seymour. He has a 17.4% interest in this company, so it'll definitely skin in the game. The other co-founder is Tim Griffiths. He also has a 17% stake. So the two co-founders 
have 34% stake in XREF, and I do like that skin the game. So the fortunes of this company are really important to both of those co-founders. Some of the other shareholders include Net Wealth, they have 9%, and Australian Ethical uh, Investments have an 8% stake in XREF. So I do like the fact that these two big fund managers, if you call them that, um, have a large interest in this company. The market cap at 61 cents is 111 million. So just over $100 million, and the ticket code for this company is XF1. Before we look at the Appendix 4C for the September quarter, uh, just to backtrack uh, and look at some of the financials for the company for, for, for the financial year 21. And then in brackets, I've got the financial year 20 numbers there as well. Revenue increased from 8 million to 12.6 million. So that's a, a more than a 50% increase in revenue from the previous year. And they've really turned things around in terms of operational cash flow and profit after tax. They were highly operational cash flow negative in financial year 20 by 7.4 million. And they've improved that to being operational cash flow positive by 2.3. So that's a $10 million turnaround. And I do believe that's uh, the management's intentions. And there was a quote from 2019 that I'll show you maybe in the next slide. And when I did see that quote, I really became interested in that company because if Actually, I'll talk about that quote when we get there. Um, they've gone from being uh, unprofitable by 10 million to being profitable. Net cash of 1.5 million, that's at the end of the financial year 21. Uh, annual recurring revenue, $15 million or plus $15 million on July 6. They didn't update this uh, annual recurring revenue in the quarter report. EVD operating cash flow, 48, which seems a bit high, but it's on a low base. Operating cash flow of only 2.3. Uh, there's a possibility they could double or even triple operating cash flow, would put, which would put the EV to operating cash flow in perspective. And the price to sales ratio, a little bit high to 9.1. But again, that's on a low base. Only $12.6 million of revenue, but growing at a really good rate. And here is that quote. I can't remember where I found this, but it just mentions that since November 2019, which is just under two years ago, XREF's primary focus has been on preserving cash and reaching cash flow break even. And they've done that. They are now operational cash flow positive for the last two quarters. And we'll look at those two appendix four C's in the next few slides. And this is telling me straight away that the management priorities are aligning with the priorities I think management should be trying to achieve. And that is becoming operational cash flow positive. And the whole reason I believe companies should be focused on becoming operational cash flow positive is all around sustainability. If you do reach operational cash flow positive state, you can grow your business by using the cash you generate in your operations. You don't have to do capital raisins. You don't have to dilute shareholders. And that's for the benefit, if you're not raising capital, is for the benefit of not only the business, but also shareholders over the medium to long term. There are so many small cap companies management out there are so focused on just increasing revenue and they don't care about being operational cash flow positive. And those companies continually have to raise capital to grow their business. It's not sustainable in the long run. And in fact, the whole way you value a company is just taking the present value of all future positive cash flows. As if a company just continually being uh, operational cash flow negative, there's no way to value that company. At some point in the future, they have to generate cash in a business. And for the very fact that XREF management mentioned this shows me that their priorities align with my priorities of how a company should be run. And that's one of the reasons I took a position in this company. Before we look at the September quarter appendix 4C, just want to go back to the June quarter to see how they're performing then and then see how they progressed over the last three months. Now, this was the June quarter that was a tipping point for me to take a position in XREF. They received $5.9 million of cash receipts, which was a record for the company. And we'll look at the cash receipts history uh, in a few slides. But not only was this a record a cash receipts uh, quarter for the company, they were also operational cash flow positive by $2.5 million, which is a substantial amount. Uh, the other thing is uh, $14.8 million of cash receipts for the year and their operational cash flow positive by $1.9 million for the year. So for the first three quarters of the financial year, XREF was not operational cash flow positive, but they did turn things around. 
This was one of their goals, their aims, and they have achieved that. And not only have they achieved that for the June quarter, the last quarter of financial year 21, they've also achieved that for the first quarter of financial year 22, and I'll get that in the next slide. And they finished the quarter with $8.2 million of debt. Now they do have uh, a loan, a $5 million fully joined facility with pure asset management, and the interest rate on that uh, facility was 9.95%. I do prefer companies not to be in debt, but this is only $5 million. And one of the reasons I don't like companies to be in debt is you just look at that interest rate, 9.95%. Now, a lot of small cap companies, because they have higher risk attached to them, need to be charged a high interest rate. So some companies have interest rates on some of their loans as high as 20%. So you always have to look at the debts that some companies are in and you have to make sure, and management have to make sure, they don't go too fully into debt. And uh, that can be a burden on a company. And just have a look at my video on Threat Protect that I released on the morning of 7th of October to see how destructive uh, debt can be for a small cap company. Now on to the September quarter, and things are progressing well for XREF. Receipts of customers was down a little bit from the previous quarter at 5.8 million. We did see some of the costs increase, particularly staff costs, but overall the business was still operational cash flow positive by $1.8 million. If they can continue that sort of cash flow over the next three quarters, this company will be operational cash flow positive by between, we'll say, six and $10 million. And that's a really good state for a company to be in. Not only that, they don't spend much money in financing investing activities, and that means a lot of that operational cash flow will go to the bottom line. That's why they were able to increase their cash in the business from 8.2 million to 9.4 million. Now, in the previous quarter, I mentioned that uh, they had a $5 million fully drone facility with pure asset management. Interest rates on that were 9.95%. Seems like they've done some negotiations with pure asset management. And that uh, fully drawn facility is now only being charged 8.5% interest rate. So it looks like uh, Pure Asset Management acknowledged that XREF is a less risky proposition moving forward. Not only that, they have more cash than the loan. So this company is actually net cash right now by about $4.4 million. Looking at uh, one quarter's... Um, Cash receipts in isolation or even operational cash flow in isolation uh, does not tell you the full picture of a company. One of the things I really like to look at is receipts history or even revenue history uh, for a company through time. And I want to see it growing through time because if a company can't increase its receipts or its revenues, then the only way profits can increase through time is if they lower their costs. And lowering costs is not sustainable over the long term, but increasing receipts it is, it could continue forever, um, theoretically. And with XREF, we have seen receipts growing through time at a fairly consistent rate. The first quarter they listed it on the ASX that they had to report. The March quarter 2016, they had $460,000 of receipts, and now it's up to $5.8 million. And the last two quarters have been their record quarters and what records they have been. The previous record was 3.5 million, and now we're up to 5.9 million. And one of the things I really liked about this quarter, and maybe the market liked it as well, because share price was up 18%. I was actually expecting um, the receipts to be a little bit down from the previous quarter. We see a massive spike in the June quarter, uh, increasing from 3.5 to 5.9. And sometimes when you see a spike in receipts, and it's happened to XREF in the past, receipts can come back a fair bit in the next quarter, and it hasn't done that with XREF. If you do calculate the growth rate in receipts um, from March quarter 2016, uh, receipts have been growing at 12.2% per quarter. That's a good growth, good growth rate per quarter. A lot of uh, big companies, well-known companies, uh, grow receipts or revenue at 12% per year, but this is per quarter. And over the past three years, uh, the growth rates have slowed a little bit, but still a very respectable 6.6% per quarter. In this slide, what I have done is I've gone to ticker.com uh, and I've just drawn out the half yearly revenue and cash flow from operations just to show you that I do believe XREF has reached a very important inflection point, and that is becoming operational cash flow positive. 
They've just achieved that in the last half year, and it's very promising that in the first quarter of financial year 22, they've continued this being operational cash flow positive. Now, this is one of their goals that they did mention in that quote um, that I showed you earlier in this video. And when we look at the chart, you can see how the market has reacted over the past about six to nine months in regards to this company being operational cash flow positive. So revenues have grown through time um, since 2016 uh, on a continual basis. So it's not um, every single half year revenues have grown, but generally they have grown. But the most important thing when you look at this is up until the last half year, this company was highly operational cash flow negative. And because management have focused on being operational cash flow positive, they've controlled costs and increased revenue and receipts. This company has reached that very important flexion point that in the future, they were able to use the funds they create in their operations to grow, um, make acquisitions, um, uh, create more products, that sort of thing, without diluting shareholders by doing capital raising. I'm going to finish this video with a couple of charts. The first one is the weekly chart from when they did list on the ASX as XREF. A lot of times when these sort of companies do list, there is that initial excitement about the company. So even though uh, XREF was not operational cash flow positive, uh, no real significant financial news, we did see the share price get as high uh, as about 78 cents uh, back in 2017. And that would have been driven by financial or good financial um, news or financial stories that would have just been about the company. A lot of people would have been excited about the future potential of the company. But a lot of times, just like other small cap companies, uh, that excitement, initial excitement, that initial hype does die away. And during 2019 into 2020, or the start of that year, we saw the share price fall from about the 70 range all the way down to less than 10 cents during the COVID-19 financial panic. In fact, the loan the share price happened in the start of April. But ever since then, the share price has been moving up as the financial story of this company has been improving. And definitely, when you look at the weekly chart right now, it's in a well-defined uptrend. We're still not at all-time highs for this company. But the good thing is, what's been driving the share price higher over the past 18 months has been the financial story. It's not been hype. It's not this initial excitement about the company. And this is um, a good reason to buy into a company because it's been driven by the right sort of things. And that is the company has reached a very inflection, a very important flexion point, and that has been operational cash flow positive. The last thing I want to show you in this video is XREF's daily chart going back one year ago. At that point in time, the share price was around about 16 to 17 cents. Right now, the share price is 61 cents. So we've almost seen the share price of XREF uh, quadruple in the past year. Some interesting interesting aspects or things about this chart. You'll notice uh, the share price movement. So even though it's quadrupled uh, in the past uh, one year, it hasn't been a straight line. We've seen a rapid increase in share price, and then the share price goes sideways or even slip back a bit for a period of time. And then we see another rapid increase in share price. And over the past month or so, we have seen another rapid rise in share price. In fact, the last two quarters, in the lead up to the release of the Appendix 4C, we have seen the share price increasing. And then after the release of the Appendix 4C in July of uh, this year, we saw the share price just go sideways. And then in the lead up to the September quarter, um, Appendix 4C, there was another rise in share price before they released their report. So maybe we'll see the share price go sideways for here over the next month or maybe two months before the release of the January or the December quarter um, Appendix 4C in January. Who knows? The other good thing about the release of the um, September quarter Appendix 4C was the increase in volumes. The market really loved this report. We saw not quite as excited market when they released their Appendix 4C on July the 6th. Even though share price did rise 22%, there wasn't as much volume as we did see on October 6th. The other thing, interesting thing here is they've released their Appendix 4Cs the last three quarters on the 6th of the month, so April 6th, July 6th, and October 6th. So potentially we'll see them release their December quarter report on January 6th, 
if it is a trading day. That is all I have for this uh, September quarter Appendix 4C video for XREF. If you do have any questions about this company or maybe any other company on the ASX, potentially about Self Wealth, uh, I will do a video on Self Wealth and hopefully release that on the weekend. So that would be the 9th or 10th of October. So look out for that video if you are interested in that company. And as more companies release their Appendix 4Cs and 5Bs, I won't do a video on every single company, but only companies that do interest me and are of interest to large portions of the investing community. Last thing I should mention is I am not a financial advisor. If you do need a financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.